covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. Microsoft Teams users are under active attack in a fake updates malware campaign. Attackers are using ads for fake Microsoft Teams updates to deploy backdoors, which use Cobalt Strike to infect companies' networks with malware. Microsoft is warning the customers about the so-called fake updates campaigns in a non-public security advisory revealed by Bleeping Computer. The campaign is targeting various types of companies with recent targets in the K-12 education sector, where organizations are currently dependent on using apps like Teams for video conferencing due to COVID-19 restrictions. Cobalt Strike is a commodity attack simulation tool that's used by attackers to spread malware, particularly ransomware. Recently, threat actors were seen using Cobalt Strike in attacks exploiting Zero Logon, a privilege elevation flaw that allows attackers to access a domain controller and completely compromise all Active Directory identity, identity services. In the advisory, Microsoft said it's seen attackers in the latest fake updates campaign using search engine ads to push top results for team software to a domain controlled by the attackers and used for nefarious activity. If victims click on the link, it downloads a payload that executes a PowerShell script which loads malicious content. Cobalt Strike beacons are among the payloads also being distributed by the campaign, which give threat actors the capability to move laterally across a network beyond the initial system of infection. The link also installs a valid copy of Microsoft Teams on the system to appear legitimate and avoid alerting victims to the, to the attack. Malware being distributed by the campaign include Predator the Thief, InfoStealer, which pilfers sensitive data such as credentials, browser, and payment data. Microsoft also has seen a backdoor and Zloader stealer being distributed by the latest campaigns. Microsoft is recommending that people use web browsers that can filter and block malicious websites and ensure that local admin passwords are strong and can't easily be guessed. Admin privileges also should be limited to essential users and avoid domain-wide service, domain service accounts that have the same permissions as an administrator, according to the report. They advise organizations to limit their attack surface to keep attackers at bay by blocking executable files that do not meet specific criteria or blocking JavaScript and VBScript code from downloading executable content. Well, on Microsoft Teams, it takes a team to be hacked. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's... You can get independently hacked very easily. Yeah, well, no, it's, it's, it's a scary thing, really, because with it being seen so much, not just organizations, but if you're an educator, if you're a teacher, yeah. student, etc., um, and it, isn't it, uh, well, think literate. You're talking about teachers and stuff. I'm thinking about how these folks have been thrown into having to use Microsoft Teams. With no experience. This is something totally new. And then all of a sudden, you get a little little window that says, hey, you need to update. It's OK. This right. is safe. And you think, oh, well, this, this is what I'm using for my classroom, so I better get yeah. that update. So oh, no. It's like, Children, make sure you install this update. Well, like, like oh, we we're, no. were just talking before the show, it really is a form of social engineering. Like, Absolutely. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's so easy to fall into the trap. And this is where phishing scams have like we think oh well i would never fall for a phishing scam because you know i don't use that service or this service or whatever but it's a it's a like a if i throw enough phishing scams out there that pretend to be the royal bank of canada yeah i will inevitably land in the inbox of some people who yes. bank at the royal bank of canada so if I buy ads that are pretending to be updates for Microsoft Teams, even though I personally, Robbie Ferguson, don't use Teams. Somebody out there. You might. Yep, somebody else yeah. might. And and social engineering, they they trick those folks into installing this malware. And we're talking ransomware. Mm -hmm. So ransomware is the one that encrypts your files and goes out on the network that you're connected to and mm -hmm. encrypts all the files that it can gain access to. And as yep. we know from Zero Logon, that is every file on the entire network. If you're like like a school network, you think, oh well, we're locked down, it's safe. <laughs> no. no, zero login, uh, zero logon allows them to have administrator credentials, just, just like your I, just like your IT admin. So like these are serious exploits, mm -hmm. and social engineering, they're using that to get into these systems that could be a backdoor into the network. Well, exactly. Like, I, I'm also scared for small businesses, right? Yeah. So again. 
everyone's working from home now. So yep. again, if you have employees who aren't as tech literate or but Henry, <laughs> who would target me? I'm just a <laughs> I'm just a work from home you know person who you no know, nobody would so, ever target me. See, yeah, false sense of security, right? Yeah, so, we become complacent, absolutely. Yeah. But the fact is, is that these are non-targeted attacks. Mm -hmm. These tools are built to find susceptible systems yeah. and attack them. Yeah, just a wide net. That's all it takes. Mm -hmm. Like you said, one email, spam it out. Yeah, so maybe a pie hole, which is an ad blocking DNS mm -hmm. server, no. suddenly becomes not just something to block your advertising, but also something to, like your ad blocker becomes something that's going to prevent malware. Yeah. They bought ads on Google. I mean, like. Come on. I've seen it happen on Facebook. I've been on yeah, Facebook. Yeah, no. And a Java, uh, I think it was a flash virus at the time, tried to install through an ad. Well, they have like a hundred dollar free like ad credit thing if you sign yeah. up for Google Ads now. So they got right. a real good deal. No, I'm just kidding. That's, that's <laughs> not sponsored. So be really careful what yeah. you click on, folks. Be very, very careful and almost mm -hmm. to the point of skeptical. All right. It, it really does show how the world is developing away from ads, though. Like I know this is going to be kind yeah. of a little bit off topic now, but it just ad ads being so intrusive hence why you have other platforms like patreon and stuff that you can support sure, channels yeah. and things like that right because whenever i'm on youtube i'm like yeah i have an ad blocker i i but, rely on ad revenue in order to survive as a as a broadcaster on youtube exactly but it's just like it's a balance now right because it's like uh -huh. is this ad gonna try to sell me or Trying to infect my Try to trick now. you into getting an infection of ransomware. Yeah, so yeah. it's just like I want to support small businesses and channels and stuff, but how do I balance that with safety now? Yeah. It's it's such a hard thing to talk it's about. It's a very good question. I don't know that there's an answer immediately sitting there ready to be given. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really just down to be very cautious, be skeptical when you're clicking on stuff online, mm -hmm. and know that even in somewhere like Google, maybe the yeah. ads contain malware. So watch out and be careful. Big thanks to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. Thanks for watching the Category 5.tv newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And if you appreciate what we do, become a patron at patreon.com slash category 5. From the Category 5.tv newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson.